pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening in. Today is the 14th episode, season 2, and we've decided to carry on this conversation from last week's episode 13. Got Patrick already on the line, so we're going to jump right in. My name is Chris Williams, and you're listening to the Constitution Commandos. I want to talk about that train deal that, uh, what was it? 60,000 pounds of ammonium nitrate. Yeah. It just, it shows up in a yard on a train, and then the next morning it's gone, just like that, vanished. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it, it left... Uh, the um, there was a plant that it was picked up at, and uh, the plant that made it, I want to say, it was in like Minnesota or something. Mm. Uh, but they manufacture ammonium nitrate. Well, they loaded it on a car, which, if anybody knows anything about hazardous materials, there's different classifications of hazardous materials explosives yeah, corrosive yep. you know flammable. yeah flammable i mean there's shit loads of different mm-hmm. classifications <laughs> each of those classifications depending on what it is that's going under that classification has a specified way of transport and storage said by the fmcsa uh, with labeling, the federal... don't forget the labeling because I'm sure that has a lot to do with how that car came up missing. Right, but I mean, I'm just saying that ammonium nitrate cannot. Well, actually, the FMCSA governs it while it's over transport. But this was actually re- released, I think, EPA or somebody that comes up with the federal guidelines on proper storage and shit like that. I'm sure OSHA ammonium. Got to do <laughs> ammonium nitrate is one of those things that's supposed to be stored in a sealed, non-corrosive container, mm-hmm. i.e., a like a plastic 55-gallon drum. Correct. Not a metal 55-gallon drum because that is it's corrosive. Corrosive. It can rust. It can it it it, it can gets affected. It. Yeah. Yeah. And. It can't be in severe high temperatures. It's got to be Relatively ventilated. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, and I'm not saying a reefer type of cool, but it, it's just. Room temperature is good. <laughs> For yeah, but I mean, it, 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 it needs to stay dry. It needs to avoid high temperatures. Right. Uh, a lot of times friction can be a bad deal with some of this stuff. So you store it away from other materials, whether they be hazardous or not. You don't want them right next to each other. So they load it up in a train. And because it's ammonium nitrate, that leads me to believe that it was in that it was in sealed. Oh, shoot. Shannon's calling me. That it was in sealed 55-gallon containers. So... And I don't remember the math of how many containers it would take, but it would have been multiple train cars for 60,000 pounds. And the 55-gallon drums stacked too high. Well. How much does it weigh by the pound, do you know? I I don't remember. But, I mean, I Mm. did a little research and I had the numbers on it, but it's. Anyway, the story was it was trained in a open hopper car, like what they haul coal in. So the top of the car was open, and they have a rollout tarp that went over it, which that is already a rollout, a rollout tarp. A, yeah, kind of like what you're kind of like they said there was a tarp over it. 
Kind of like a end dump 18 wheeler, a gravel hauler or something. Well, that's already bullshit. And you know it's bullshit material. because it's a explosive and flammable. It's a volatile material. And you're covering it with It a... was in a corrosive car and it was not sealed. Sealed con- non corrosive container does not mean an open top metal train car with a tarp. That's not sealed. So we already know a lot of the official story is a lie. Well, then the route that the train took, and I don't remember exactly where it was going. It was going somewhere down in California, I believe. But it stopped in a yard in the desert at one of the particular train switches. And I can't remember if it was around Vegas or it was Arizona, somewhere. wasn't it? I don't think it was that far south. But <laughs> when it left, well, the car came up missing. And the train car that had the ammonium nitrate was found outside of a naval weapons testing ground empty with no 60,000 pounds of ammonium nitrate okay so and not I've even tire done, tracks leading up to the car i'm amazed well we're just not hearing anything about it and that's mm-hmm. what's getting me i don't know if there weren't any or i don't even know if there was an investigation it was stolen. They found the car empty with no ammonium nitrate, and that's all anybody has heard. Okay? I have heard no follow-ups. I've heard no furthering investigation, looking for leads or following leads, looking for suspects or anything. I mean, I hadn't heard anything about it. So the government, I guess, thinks it's perfectly okay to have 60,000 pounds of a substance that was responsible for blowing up the Oklahoma City Federal the Oklahoma City Federal Building, which in that one there was only like twenty five hundred pounds of ammonium nitrate utilized in like a six thousand pound bomb. So you're talking you have to sixty thousand pounds of missing ammonium nitrate. What kind of damage yeah, so did somebody we're, do? We're talking at least fifteen, maybe twenty a separate bombs of that size of what hit Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of I keep digging and looking. What was the time frame when it was noticed missing and when this car was found? What was the time frame? I don't remember what the time frame was. I think that it became public that it was missing around May 10th, I think. Um, I could always pull back up on the manifest of the train <laughs> and, you know, where its origin was, where it departed, you know, the routes that it took, what lines it took to get there and the actual discovery of the em- empty train car. But uh, nothing of it is... Or should I say everything about the story and the missing 60,000 pounds it's is hokey. extremely suspect to me. Yeah, there's nothing about it makes sense. And nothing about the explanations that have been given up or the reporting of it thus far is even rational in thought simply because the amount of a highly volatile substance has not been recovered. That, to me, is a red flag. Why haven't they recovered it? Why haven't they done more Uh, investigation? Why haven't they reported more about it? (laughs) Yeah, there's... I mean, when I worked on the pipeline, I've been up into a number of train switches. It's probably more difficult to gain access to a train switch than it is to a port. And you got to have credentials to get in each. The port, if you have a Twit card, 
you can go around inside the pork on the port unescorted and they'll give you a layout of the port and where you're going right. now a train switch once you go through the process to get admitted onto the property you have to have an escort whether you got credentials or not you are not allowed to be in the train switch without being escorted i've been in a number of them and they mm -hmm. all are the same way so i don't see it possible for any mastermind unless they've got the ability to produce legitimate documentation and credentials that would gain them access and then if they did have those credentials they still had to be escorted so to me it says that the government had a hand in it well and then to what, have i've the, got you what day did you say may the 12th it was may 10th i think is when the was reported first i don't know if that's when it was hijacked or if that's when they found the car all right, well, I just pulled up two reports, one from May 21st and the other one from May 24th. And it might have been the 20-something, yeah. I, I, I know it was in May. Yeah, this was in May, but this report reads that uh, 60,000 pounds of ammonium nitrate, a chemical used as a fertilizer and an explosives, went missing on a rail shipment from Wyoming to California in Wyoming. April. Yeah. And has still not been found, officials said. Dino Noble, an explosive manufacturing company, notified the federal government of the loss and said in a statement that it was investigating what happened during the nearly two-week journey. The company said a rail car with material was sealed when it left a manufacturing site in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and the seals, quote, were still intact, end quote, when it arrived at Salt Saltdale, California. Salt. Okay. All right. The initial assessment is that the leak through the bottom gate on the rail car may have developed in transit. How's that? That didn't happen because they didn't ship it that way. All right. A report made on May 10th to the National Response Center, a federal emergency call center for railroad incidents, said that the rail car left Wyoming on April 12th and arrived in California empty. Dino Noble said that the rail car was transported back to Wyoming for further investigation and that it had limited control, quote, of the train's activity while the cargo was being transported. Uh, Kristen South is a spokeswoman for the rail carrier Union Pacific. She said in a statement that the company's investigation was in its early stages. The fertilizer is designed for ground application and quick soil absorption. Ms. South said, if the loss resulted from a rail car leak over the course of transportation from origin to destination, the, rela the release should pose no risk to public health or the environment. Do you buy that? Well, I, it wasn't transported like that. No. So everything called, said after that is bullshit. That's what I'm saying. They're she, trying Ms. to call the fertilizer. It was ammonium well, I mean, nitrate. Ammonium and nitrate it is used, used in fertilizer. fertilizer. But it wasn't in the form of fertilizer. Right? Yeah. But see, I believe that they are trying to give a real shady excuse to say, oh, well, it leaked out on the two-week journey. So it, nobody stole it. It leaked out. No, it didn't. Because mm -hmm. you didn't transport it that way. Well, the company said it does not suspect any criminal or malicious activity was involved in the disappearance of the cargo. <laughs> of course like this. not. You like this? The federal Ro hey. the federal railroad administration and the California Public Utilities Commission were also investigating. KQED, a San Francisco radio station, reported. That's what they reported. The agencies could not be reached for comment on Sunday. Ammonium nitrate is used mainly as a fertilizer. It is also used to manufacture first aid products. You see how they just kind of went away from it in the very end, I said. And also as an explosive in mining and construction, according to the Department of Homeland Security. The chemical by itself is relatively harmless, but can explode if it is added to fuel source and 
subjected to heat and pressure. If it can be used for explosives and mining, what else could it be used to explode? Uh, Buildings, infrastructure, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the hell you want to go boot. Right. I mean, it's, everybody in this damn country can go into their kitchen sink or their laundry room and they can mix any of those chemicals or the right chemicals in the proper proportions and make something go boom. But ammonium nitrate is like very volatile. Yeah, yeah it's a. Uh, it's it's quite a display if it goes off. <laughs> this must have been the article that you saw. This one was the one on the 24th. According to a spokesperson from Dino Noble, an explosives manufacturer whose plant the rail car departed, it's believed the chemical leaked in small pallets along the way. <laughs> pellets, pellets, excuse me, not pallets. Every indication is the pellets fell from the rail car onto the tracks in small quantities throughout the long trip. Though ammonium nitrate is routinely used as a common fertilizer, it can also be used as an explosive. All it needs is a little fuel. <laughs> Historically, there have been at least a half dozen instances where ammonium nitrate was the cause for deadly explosions. Most famously, the chemical was used in the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing which killed 168 people. Most recently, a 2020 explosion in Lebanon killed more than 200 people after ammonium nitrate detonated. Union Pacific, the company responsible for transporting the rail car along with Dino Noble, both maintained that criminal activity is not suspected. Well, of course not. Let's not scare the American people, shall we? Or let's not give the American people something to hang on to and think about. Right. That's enough of a red flag. You heard about it coming up missing. That's all you need to know. Yeah, 60,000 pounds. Oh, yeah, man. It was, it was just a leak. Yeah, it, it's between Wyoming and <laughs> it's just all over the ground. <laughs> oh, well, listen uh, to this. Now, th now, two reports say that this chemical leaked. According to Dino Noble, the rail car at issue was sealed when it left the Cheyenne facility. And the seals were still intact when it arrived in Saltdale. The rail car, dead gummit. The rail car was also observed after departure in the railroad Cheyenne yard with the seals intact and no signs of any leaks. The rail car was transported back to Wyoming for inspection. Well, it, how come they didn't say anything about what the rail car looked like when it got to Saltdale, California? Yeah, I, I, it's a if, big cover up. If the seals weren't leaking, how did it leak out of it? Which mm -hmm. it wouldn't. If it, it was packaged properly, car anyway. if it was packaged properly, it wouldn't have leaked. Yeah, it wasn't in that type of car anyway. I mean. No need to worry. Uh, it's just, just a fertilizer, even though it was used in the Oklahoma City bombing. <laughs> I mean, if you go buy a bag of miracle Grow and you see those little white styrofoam-looking things in the bag, that's ammonium nitrate. Mm-hmm. But you don't see 60,000 pounds of it in one bag. No, you might have about a couple, not even, Probably you'll have a few grams pounds. of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if you got a, yeah, you ain't got much of it in a bag of fertilizer. <laughs> I mean, you do have a fair amount, but per bag, but it ain't yeah, no 60,000 pounds. <laughs> right, and there's, well, you can't put a whole lot of it in the ground anyway, because then it's no longer fertilizer it. Kills the ground. Yeah, it burns everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have I have trouble understanding that report. Both of those reports, both basically say the same thing. Nothing. It would seem to me that there would be, I mean, well, of course, if we had real journalists, they would want to know what the car looked like. They would want to inspect the car themselves. What the car looked like when it got to Saltdale. I don't see anything about the end of the trip. I hear about it going back to Cheyenne, but what happened to it is, I mean, nobody investigated the car in Saltdale, so I find And it another interesting. thing is, you would think that a journalist of his right, where the salt, I mean, it's public knowledge. You can go to the EPA, to FMCSA, and you can find proper transport and storage of ammonium nitrate. Yeah, that comes. And with, you would uh, think that report would have covered that. A mm -hmm. journalist would have put that in an article, but they don't. 
That, that's on the, uh, what is it called? The MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheets. Everybody, uh, that, everybody that handles chemicals has to keep that. And chemicals, by the way, even being rubbing alcohol and hairspray, fingernail polish. Yeah, shampoo. It's got, yeah, it's all got to have an MSDS. So, yeah, I have a hard time believing that article myself. And it seems, I don't know. Of course, you know, we were brought up to have that um, not critical race theory, but critical thinking where you examine everything, question everything. Yeah, reach a satisfactory understanding of what is going on. <laughs> Neither one of those articles even present that, come close to it even. No, they're just shilling for what right. the, that is a story that was released to them by the parties involved. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> journalism is not journalism anymore. Well, what it does now is it begs the question, what is it that we are we are really waiting for? I mean, I'm expecting well, explosions across the nation now. I mean, could this be, uh, I mean, part of what's been causing train derailments or, you know, fires in crazy places at crazy times? Well, I think we will see things in the form of explosions. And I think that this is me opining, but I feel that we've talked about it. There will be some major events, and our government, I see, is going to call martial law, and there will not be a 2024 election. That is what I see. Well, folks, you know the deal. That's it for today. Do you have any ideas about this episode today? Leave your comments in the comments section. We'll read them all. And don't forget to support the Com Constitution Commando by visiting our mega merch marketplace at American Spirit Novelties and Apparel dot store. Until next time, on behalf of Patrick and myself, we're the Constitution Commandos signing out. <laughs>